the other side. Obviously, I know what I'm talking about. And I think as you were talking, I was thinking this is not necessarily a matter of money. It's a matter of principle. The question by the young lady spoke to the mainstay of this, which is a matter of legitimacy and a matter of elections. Now, when you speak about Hamas, it is you, I believe, who has an imagined picture of these people. These people, as has been demonstrated, have d done social work, have credentials that are untainted in relation to their local and immediate legitimacy. Then when you speak of them not necessarily asking for partnership internationally, that is precisely the opposite of what happened. A good 10, year, 10, 10 days ago, they did come out and invite the international community to engage with that election and respect its results. And this is precisely what the international sh community should be doing. It is not a matter of uh, hoping that they, were, uh, they, that they would change. It's a matter of seeing the evolution within the Palestinian conflict, having gone from a conflict uh, 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 characterized by violence, we are now entering, we have a chance of entering a true peace of the strong, as I said. When uh, Ariel Sharon was elected president of Israel, nobody asked the Israelis to change their mind. A man whose past was tainted with accusations of being a war criminal. People engage with that. And indeed, what we saw is the ability to deliver on the disengagement from Gaza. This is the real world that we're talking about right now. This is the real people from Hamas that whose views must be respected, whose legitimacy has been established, and with whom the international well, we, community we should do, engage we remedy. We do respect remedy. Hamas's view. That's why we, we, we respect Hamas's view. And we are asking you, and we are asking the international community, and I'm speaking to you as a Muslim to Muslim, that by engaging and supporting Hamas, you are then, by your vote, by your resources, by your finances, indicating that this is the Islam that represents you? All right, this is okay, let, this let, is let me just, it's let me just, occupation. all right. Let me just remind you of the motion at the moment. This House believes the international community must accept Hamas as a political partner. There's a lady in the third row who's had her hand up for a very long time. We've clarified that we want democracy in the Middle East and Palestine voted for Hamas, right? Denying Hamas as a political power due to its past actions, isn't it? like you're punishing Palestinians for doing what they're supposed to? And wouldn't it cause the Palestinians to lose trust, let alone faith, within the international community? Then force causing them to be even more violent? David Trump. Um, I, I just think that this, this idea that we, you, should have, um, you should make policy without regard to what you know about the world is very unwise. Um, should you make policy without regard to what people's views are? Uh, the United States is, and, and, and the other democracies are going to make policy based on, yes, exactly, on people's views. But on they're the paying views. the price in this region for uh, it, uh, on, on, on the views. Yes, but you know what? You know what? This region is paying the price. It is paying a much more severe price. It is, the, it is this region that is threatened with violence, and it is this region that is disgraced in the eyes of the world if it supports organizations like Hamas. And let, let me say, just fi finally on, on your question. Um, you know, you know, when you say, you talk about what the Palestinians are supposed to do, it is, there have been opportunities and opportunities and opportunities for a peaceful resolution dating back to 1948. It is the unwillingness to accept peace, a peace that includes the existence of the state of Israel. It is the deep unwillingness to do that that is the source of a conflict through which Israel has become stronger and stronger and richer and richer and the Middle East and the rest of the Middle East have sunk more and more deeply into chaos and war and violence. And the price, the price of Hamas is paid in Algeria, it's being paid in Iraq, it's going to be paid in Saudi Arabia, it's going to be paid in Egypt. That is where the price is being paid. It, this is, it is like one of these terrible Greek tragedies where the violent, if you support violence, it is on your own head that okay, the violence Okay, okay, let's, let's move to a question in the third row. My question is to Mr. Cohen. Do you think that now Hamas, in, with, now in power, would be able to convince other organizations to end their terrorist attacks on Israel? Well, I know that there are some people on this panel that'll think it's a subterfuge in a game, but all the reports on the ground indicate over the last three weeks, Hamas has been trying to stop the firing of Qassam rockets into, Israel, into what is described as Israel. I know that over the last three weeks, Hamas has dispatched lots of political activists and members throughout the territories and engaged people to try to bring them into the process. I believe that Hamas, like every liberation movement in the world, now that they have finally achieved their say, or hopefully will on behalf of their people, will evolve into a movement which will, which will help to facilitate the peace. The problem is the West wants them to fail. 
The problem is the West is invested in essentially the status quo. The problem is a year from now, if things were going well, the gentlemen on the other end of the table would have nothing to gripe about in their grand conspiracy about Muslim terrorists worldwide. You want to come back? You want to come back on this? Um, things will not go well. And uh, things will not go well. And, and I, as, I, as I listen to this resolution, as I listen to the atmosphere of this house, I, I see, I just see the terrible fatality of it all coming. Um, that these choices that are being made now by the people in this room, these are choices that come home, that come home, that you, what you are voting for or against is not the future of the State of Israel. It is your future. I make the, Dr. Mohammed. I make the exact op, uh, opposite prediction that you make. I think that things will go well. Hamas will demonstrate to the surprise of many in the West that it's able to address this. They will sit and be constructive. And another incentive of their ability to deliver is that they spring from this new Palestinian society. They're not some elite imported leadership that is corrupt and that is essentially undermining a process. They have done all the work at the level of the social services. These are the men and women from this society, of the values of this society, and it's in their benefit that things will go well. Okay, we're going to take one last question. I'm addressing my question to the right side of the table. What would have happened to the peace process if Sadat were to blame, to have blamed on Begin his uh, terrorist record, would they have advanced? Sadat at his word, Sadat made a psychological leap. Sadat cut through the Gordian knot. Sadat went and accepted Israel and, and sat down to speak. That is, that is the government of Israel of the day, Begin. It is that gesture, that psychological leap, that cutting of the Gordian knot that is required with Hamas. Will Hamas be capable of doing it? Will Hamas recognize its opponent? Will Hamas then meet those conditions, which is now part of the international agreement? Menachem Begin didn't hold it against Anwar Sadat, that Anwar Sadat had been a supporter of, the, of, of Nazi Germany, um, because in both cases, the events you're referring to had happened a very long time ago, and there had been considerable evolution since then. With Hamas, what we're being asked to forget, uh, not events of 30 and 40 years ago, we're being asked to forget the words in their mouth until the day before yesterday and the actions that are impending at any moment. Come we're on, being, what, what were we asked to forget with Begin? We, we were asked to forget with Begin that he was involved, that, with, with, that he'd been involved with the year other, 30 other, years before. Other leaders of Israel. That in Menachem Begin's case, you were asked to forget that 30 years before he had been involved with an extremist group. Oh. And and, and, is bad. Can, and, can, and, and, and excuse me. That, we asked to forget me. that Stop. he had been a supporter of the Nazis. Um, and both sides and, and, and both sides made a peace that has lasted. Now, in the case of Hamas, it is, you know, one of the things that is really disturbing, and I, as I say, disturbing for you, is you do not want to see the Hamas that is. You are dealing with a, a theoretical Hamas that is that, that in this theory is completely different from its own words and its own actions. You have to, uh, it is, and what Sadat did and what Bacon did was they de dealt with realities. And that is not what this room is doing when it hypothesizes this imaginary Hamas that is different from the real Hamas. I, I think this demonization of Hamas is very dangerous and quite counterproductive. You speak of events and you speak of facts as if people are not aware of the positions being taken by Hamas. A group, and the actions. If I may, a group that has actually led a campaign which was followed publicly, internationally. There has been indeed a ceasefire for the good part of a year, unilaterally uh, uh, respected. All of these demonstrate a pattern, an engagement, as well as the historical factor which was indicated uh, uh, to which, in which all of these groups enter the political game with a desire for closure, as I mentioned. They really want to bring this to an end, and this is where the international community, you said earlier that this is not about the United States. I agree with you. This is not about the United States. Okay, well, we unfortunately must bring this to an end. We've come to the point in the proceedings where we're going to vote on the motion, the motion that this House believes the international community must accept Hamas as a political partner. Would you please take the voting devices if you want to vote for the motion, please press button one, the yellow button. If you want to vote against it, please press button two, the red button. And would you just press them once according to your vote? Now we should have the vote coming up on the screen. 88.2% in favor of the motion, 11.8%
against. The motion has been resoundingly passed. But it just remains for me to thank our distinguished panel. Some of them have come a long way to be on the debate tonight. Thank you very much also to our audience for coming. We'll be back next month with more from the Doha debates. Until then, from all of us on the team, thank you very much for coming. Good night. Thank you. Thank you.